In this video, I'm going to go over the first 30 questions of the June 2023 Chem Regents exam. This is known as Part A. They are all multiple choice, pretty much vocabulary driven and facts. Let's take a look. We're going to start with question one, which phase describes the nucleus of any atom? Of course, you want to remember that it's the protons and the neutrons that are in the nucleus. It's the protons that give the nucleus the overall positive charge, which of course is choice one. For number two, which two particles each have a mass of approximately one atomic mass unit? Electrons hardly have any mass. We essentially call it zero. So we're talking a neutron and a proton for choice three. For number three, the wave mechanical model of the atom describes the location of electrons. They are in orbitals outside of the nucleus. It is an important vocabulary word that you need to remember. Question four, when a ground state electron in an atom moves to the excited state, well, it's going from ground up to excited. The atom is absorbing energy. Get rid of three and four as it moves into a higher state, which is choice one. For number five, which statement describes a chemical property of iron? Chemical means it's how it's interacting with other substances. It is not that it's malleable, that's physical. Conducts electricity is physical. Ah, reacts with. There you go. Choice three. For question six, diamond and graphite are known as allotropes, even though they're made of the same atoms of carbon, and therefore if they're different structures, they have different properties, which is choice one. For number seven, which substance can be broken down by a chemical change? Your substances are your elements and your compounds. If we're going to have something broken down by chemical change, it has to be a compound. Cobalt, krypton, and manganese are all elements. They are listed, of course, on the periodic table, and their names are on reference table S, if you forget them. Here, our compound is ethane, or choice two. For number eight, we're going to go to reference table I, and we're asked which equation represents conservation of mass and energy. What we're looking for, then, is which of these four choices is a balanced equation, and then do we have the energy on the correct side of the arrow. If we have energy on the left, it's endothermic. If energy is on the right, it's exothermic. So the first thing we want to do is balance the equation. Just picking choice one, I have one carbon on the left, one on the right, four hydrogens on the left. I only have two on the right. It can't be choice one. Let's move on for choice two, one carbon on the left, one on the right, four hydrogens on the left, again, two on the right, it can't be choice two. If we go to choice three, one carbon on the left, one on the right, four hydrogens, two times two is four hydrogens, and then two times two here for oxygen, and then two plus two is two oxygen. So this is balanced, and choice four, let's go through it one carbon on the left, one on the right, four hydrogens on the left, two times two is four on the right, four oxygens total on the left, two plus two is a total of four on the right. So both choices three and four are correct. As far as balancing, now we have to check the energy part on reference table I. Is the equation endo or exothermic? All right, I've circled the equation. It happens to be the top one. You see that delta H has the negative sign. It tells you even as a footnote on this reference table that the negative sign tells me it's exothermic. It is going to be a product. That means we're going to see it on the right. Let's go back. All right, back at question eight. It was between three and four, but four is the winner, and that's because we're showing energy as a product. All right, we're checking out question number nine, and we're at SDP, and we're asked about which property can be used to differentiate a 10 gram sample of sodium chloride from a 10 gram sample of sodium nitrate. Well, they're both 10 grams. So it can't be mass. They're both at STP. Standard temperature is zero degrees Celsius. It can't be temperature. Now, soluble in water. They are both soluble in water. However, we do have the solubility curves. And with the solubility curves, at any given temperature, sodium nitrate is more soluble than sodium chloride. I'm going to go ahead and take a look. All right, here's sodium nitrate and here is sodium chloride. Now, you might get confused and take a look at this and think to yourself, well, 10 grams of both is below their solubility line. So they're both soluble. But the difference here is this is in 100 grams of water. If you don't use 100 grams, if you use a lot less, the sodium nitrate is going to dissolve with less water than the sodium chloride. And that's how you can differentiate 
the two. It can't be choice four either because they're both solids at STP. The best answer is choice three for question nine. For question 10, what are the number of electrons shared between two molecules of, or I'm sorry, two atoms in an oxygen molecule. Oxygen has six valence electrons. It needs two more to feel like a noble gas configuration, and therefore oxygen, when it bonds with another oxygen atom, forms a double bond. Each bond is two electrons, and two times two would be four or choice four. Question 11, which changes in both charge and radius occur when an atom loses an electron? We're talking losing here, not gaining. So if an atom loses electrons, right, that's typically your metals. Your metals, of course, if they're losing a negative charge, become positive. So let's get rid of choices one and two. And if they're losing an electron, the atom becoming an ion is smaller. That is choice three. For number 12, which statement describes what occurs when two iodine atoms react to produce an iodine molecule? Well, definitely you are forming a bond, and any time a bond is formed, energy is released. So bond forms, energy is released, it's choice two. For 13, which process can be used to separate a mixture of two liquids having different boiling points. If we're talking different boiling points, we're talking distillation. At this point, I just want to remind you, if you've gotten any of these questions wrong, it's because you forgot a definition or a, maybe a fact, and I would highly recommend you write it down and read and reread it a few times to get it back in your brain so when you keep moving forward and answering more questions, you won't get it wrong again. With that, let's go to question 14. Which statement describes a solution of sodium chloride in water? Well, it's not saying anything about adding excess sodium chloride. We're going to say, therefore, it's got to be homogeneous or look the same throughout. So we'll get rid of one and two. And then, of course, the solute that's what's being dissolved is the sodium chloride and the solvent is the water that's doing the dissolving, which is choice three. For 15 at SDP, which property would be the same for one liter of helium and one liter of argon? They're both gases, all right? They are not gonna have the same boiling points. They are not gonna have the same densities. And quite frankly, they are not gonna have the same masses. They have the same volumes. Now at SDP, if we have the same volume for different gases, what we have have is we do have the same number of atoms. That's Avogadro's law for question 15. For question 16, the melting of an ice cube is an example of, well, when we're melting something, it's going from a solid to a liquid. Think of melting ice or if you're going to melt butter. That's probably even better because for butter, what do we have to do? We got to put it in a pan on the stove. So it is definitely endothermic. And then it's just a phase change, which is a physical change, which is choice two. Question 17, which statement explains the low boiling point of hydrogen at standard pressure? The low boiling point is not due to the bond between the hydrogens, it's going to be the intermolecular forces between the hydrogen molecules, and they are weak. So that is choice four. For 18, in chemical reactions, which term is defined as the difference between the potential energy of the product and potential energy of the react? Okay, that is definitely known as heat of reaction. For 19, we have which phrase describe what happens to the reaction pathway and activation energy of a reaction to which a catalyst is added. Well, it's going to be a different pathway and it lowers the activation energy. And if you remember potential energy diagram, that means the middle of that diagram, it drops. So different pathway, lower activation energy. For question 20, an atom of which element is bonded to the carbon atom in the amide functional Group. Do not guess. Go to the reference tables and let's check it out. Amide is a functional group, organic. They are carbon containing compounds. Here on reference table R, we just keep scrolling down and we're looking for amide. Didn't say amine, it said amide. So amide has an oxygen and the nitrogen. So let's go back and take a look. We said an oxygen or a nitrogen, and we have nitrogen as choice two. That's the answer for question 20. For 21, which statement describes two isomers of butane? Again, we're getting a lot of different vocabulary words here or facts. You just got to know them, write them down, go to review sheets. I do have a set of review sheets on Chem Coach Central. By all means, you can download them, read them over, read them to yourself, rewrite them, 
and then go back and practice questions. In this case, what you have with an isomer is you're going to have the same molecular formula, but different structure, different arrangement of the atoms, the way they're bond. So let's take a look, and that means different properties, by the way. So same molecular formula, so they're not different, cross out three and four, and then they have different structural formulas, which is choice one. All right, we are on the last page for part A. Term represents an organic reaction that produces soap. Fact you need to know, it's called saponification. For 23, in which part of an electrochemical cell does reduction occur? It's an ox red cat. It's the easiest way to know it. So red for reduction, cat for cathode. 24, which energy change occurs in an operating voltaic cell? So voltaic cells take chemical energy and convert it to electrical energy. That is right here in choice one for 25. Which substance is known as an Arrhenius base? Arrhenius base is a metal and an OH, which Right here, it's choice three. Question 26, which statement represents neutralization? An acid neutralizes a base and vice versa. So it's an acid and a base reacting and they produce water and a salt, which is choice one. Question 27, a tenfold increase in the hydronium ion. That means it's increasing in acidity. Hydronium ion is H3O+, plus, which is just H plus and H2O. So we're increasing in acidity. If we're increasing in acidity, remember that means the pH is decreasing. And that's exactly what we have, a decrease of one unit of pH, which is choice one. For 28, based on reference table N, which particle is emitted by the radioactive decay of francium-220? Let's go look. Francium-220 listed on table N. We go ahead and we find it, and it has a decay mode here, right? It's showing you the symbol for an alpha particle. Now, if you didn't know what it was, don't guess. Just head over to good old table O, and you'll see that the symbol tells you you're dealing with, again, an alpha particle, and the names, of course, are used as the choices. That's why you want to double check and make sure you have the name. That makes, for question 28, the answer is choice one. For 29, which type of reaction releases the greatest amount of energy per kilogram of reactant? By far, it is going to be a nuclear reaction, either fusion or fission. In this case, it's fission. And finally, in question 30, which risk is related to the radioactive isotope used to generate electricity? So we're looking at a risk here. And that is, of course, not the depletion of fossil fuels, not the depletion of ozone, not exposure to acid rain, but the possibility, if there is some sort of accident, the exposure to nuclear emission. That ends part A. You're going to move on to part B-1. Uh, B There's B-2 and part C. They'll be in separate videos. Keep working hard and good luck.